What is up guys, Pie Muffin here, and we are back with another video, and unfortunately the English version of the game closed down last night, as you can see here, um, May 29th, that was yesterday, so a lot of people I know are going to be jumping over to the Japanese version of the game if they don't mind, you know, not being able to read anything, so I figured I'd make another guide. I have one already as part of this playlist for Tales of the Rays, but I figured I'd make a new one you know, for people who are just uh, hopping in. So I'm just going to go over real quick the two main things you need getting started on website-wise. And then after that, I'll go into the actual game and show you what each individual button does. So first of all, you want to have the Tales of the Rays wiki um, for the main reason that, you know, maybe you didn't even play the English version. So you know, knowing the different animas, knowing the different weapon types, knowing the difference between a free mirage and a summoned one, yada, yada, yada. Also, I would say definitely uh, hit up the Discord because there's a lot of people in there who can be really helpful on stuff in case you can't find something on the wiki. You just want to ask a question. So, obviously, I'll just go through all of these, what it shows on here. So, enhancement. You know, it shows you all the different crystals and what they do. You know, you basically use all of these to level up your equipment. Well, I would not use these bottom three for your regular equipment because that's kind of a waste because these are the only ones that can be used for uh, your mirror arts to level them up. And then it obviously shows you all the upgrade materials, basically the limit breaking stuff for your equipment. So all that kind of stuff is pretty important. Uh, limit boost, same sort of thing. It tells you how much it costs to do each kind of limit boost for the different rarities. Let's see, what else we got? Order. You can get information on the different enemies and how much XP they give. Basically, all kinds of basic stuff here. And then in contents, you can look up the different characters. So what's important about this, so uh, let's... Let's say, for example, uh, let's just go to all Anima Sync. So, like, for example, uh, let's say you're starting off brand new. So, you're going to obviously be starting off with X, but you can't read Japanese. So, you don't know what his different moves are going to actually do. So, you can go here. It shows all the different weapons, and it tells what the art is and what that art actually does. Now, I will say there are some things that haven't been updated, like... Um, who, for example, is a good, uh, who's a newer character? Let's, let's say Kana, for example. You know, you will get some arts, like, see, it says Delta Ray Icicle, but you really don't need a explanation to what that is for the most part. But then you get these two, like, these ones right here, other than using them in the game, you really won't know what they do. Um, but her five star does heal, so, you know, you can see that. Because that's the most important thing, is knowing which characters heal and which ones don't. And knowing which arts that is, because you need to have at least one healer on your team at all times, so your team actually can regain health, because during missions, they don't regain health on their own, unless they have an art that specifically deals with that. So, same thing, you can go with the weapons. It's got all the different types of weapons uh, you can filter through, the different mirage arts, um, just items, chapters, events. So, if you like for chapters, for example, like let's say you're... You want to get all the diamonds you can possibly get, all the summon currency. Um, so you would go here. Then you would go to quests and expand that. And it'll tell you all the different things you need to do for this. Obviously, this shows mirror gems. You can ignore that if you're playing the Japanese version because this isn't the currency you get. This isn't free-to-play currency. Mirror gems are paid currency in the Japanese version. So... Same thing with events, um, I guess if you, uh, so like for example, sometimes they do rerun events, so like let's say for example, let's do one that's probably realistic that'll eventually come back, uh, let's say this one, because this one's probably going to come back pretty soon, so the Tales of Graces event, um, it can show you all the different, uh, pretty much characters that will help you give a bonus. Obviously, this is the biggest one, so obviously characters like this will give you the biggest boost for it. Um, I don't... Let me see if they have the event shop here, too. Um, 
doesn't look like it shows it right here. Oh, missions and exchange market. So yeah, that's what we want to see. So this right here will tell you uh, what you get for that. Wait, no, that's not... All right, whatever. Either way, this way you can look at the different events and see what they get. Um, and then there's obviously an FAQ that has very, you know, you know, basic questions. What are basic commands to know? Is it possible to play a JP version? Obviously it is, or I would be making this video. Um, all this kind of stuff uh, is very important. And then over here on this other thing I have up here, it just basically has a very quick guide. Because So once you're already in the game, this will show you, because obviously if you're just booting up the game, you're not going to have any idea what buttons do what unless you, you know, trial and error it. But like, for example, um, down here where it says basic navigation, you click home menu. See right here, it shows, you know, the basic screen and then home, quest, party, enhance, sell trade, summon, menu. Um, and I believe, yeah, and then if you go to sell trade, It'll tell you which shop has what. The other menus are pretty self-explanatory. Like if you go to, let's open this up one more time. So like if you click enhance, it'll just show you, <clears throat> excuse me, all your list of characters. And then you just choose which one you want to enhance. Um, like I said, though, when it comes to giving your party equipment. So like you would click party and that's where you put your equipment in. Um... You're probably going to have to navigate between the wiki and your actual game because obviously you won't know what equipment does what. So when you're equipping it, unless you actually just equip a bunch of stuff and then enter a mission and then try your different arts, you won't really know exactly which moves are doing what. So it'll be important to do that. Um, but I'm going to go over all this stuff in the second part of the video, which is going to be in just a second here. I'll go over what each button does and what you need for it. So, without further ado, I'm going to cut right here, and then I will see you guys in the actual game. So, I'll see you in a minute. And we are back, and now we're actually in the game. What's up, guys? So, the second part, I will just be going over what each individual button does on each individual menu. So, let's actually just hop right into that. So, obviously, up here on the top left, this is the news board. This is where you can look at all the different stuff that's going on. Obviously, like right here, it's talking about the Yuri Step Up banner for the last chapter that came out and the Mogilu event that will be starting in just a couple hours. Second thing right here is your, basically your gift inbox. So for your daily logins or any kind of compensation they give us for long updates or anything. Um, this is your missions tab. So, you know, other mobile games have like achievements or whatever, just different things you complete. This page right here, the second one is the one you'll be doing the most. Um, because this is where you'll get your daily uh, currency and friend points. So, I actually don't know what the friend points are. I think you just gotta complete like two missions or something. But I know for this one, you just need to collect three treasure chests each day from missions. And you get seven diamonds. Which is pretty good if you really think about it. It really adds up. And then obviously you've got all different kinds of missions right here. Um, obviously in these last three tabs, they're event based. So there's nothing in them right now. But this is all basic stuff, so like, if you get 41 characters to level 50, um, you get prisms there. Um, if you get 31 characters to level 60, you'll get more diamonds through that. Just basic stuff like that. So that is the missions tab. And then, this is going to be your friends list. And I'll go over real quick uh, how the buttons work on the friends list. So, this first page is obviously people you are following. And I didn't mean to click that. I was just... Okay. Just give me one second. Okay, so obviously the top left that I'm not going to click as much is your follower. Your following. And then the second tab is the people who are following you. You can only have a total of 100 people following you, which is kind of annoying because if you have like a friend you want to add or something and have them add you, you actually got to remove people. So I'll show you real quick how to remove somebody. In case, uh, because you don't really need people following you who don't really play the game. Obviously, you can't really tell if you can't read Japanese when the last time they logged in. But 
usually if they don't have a rainbow background for their uh, summon mirage art, then they're probably someone who hasn't played too much. So let's see if we can find someone who doesn't have a rainbow or who doesn't have like a fully leveled up mirage art. Because at this point, most people, you know, that have been playing very regularly should be able to level up mirage arts fairly quick, unless they're like a super whale. Um, I'm just going to get rid of one of these uh, Leneths, because there's a ton of them. So you'll click this second button down here, and then click that. That's how you get someone to unfollow you. And as you can see, now I'm down to 83. Moving onward. Down here, you get a basically... This is just a free passport thing. And what a passport does is, for a limited amount of time, it'll give you increased rewards whenever you're doing story or enhancement quests. It will not apply to events or anything like that. But that's pretty much it for that. This thing over here, this is just picking a random mission that you've already completed and letting you do it with like a specific team. I don't really understand the purpose of that, but it's there. And then this little bell icon in the bottom, these are your did this is a relatively new thing that they've done i mean it was in my life i covered it in my last update uh video on the game but it's been around for a couple months since the part two came out so this first mission obviously i can't show you the buttons that will be there for you because my characters are already out on missions but this is so you can level up your characters so You'll take four characters, you'll pick a level uh, cap, so I have 190 because the four characters I have here add up to over 190, so they'll 100% complete this mission. And you just send them out for however much time, I sent them out for 10 hours, because that's the maximum time you can send them out for currently. And they come back and they level up. Second one is for like, you know, anima orbs or level up crystals for your equipment. Uh, pretty much that stuff and then the last one is a food you basically send them out on a cooking mission and depending on the setup of characters you put out there they'll go out and make a specific type of food and it'll give you a certain type of boost so like this one right here I can't read Japanese but I see the HP 60% so that means my HP gets a 60% boost for as long as this is active um, and that's pretty much it for the cooking stuff I think that's it for the main first page yeah okay so as you can see on the second and fourth panel on the bottom i'm not gonna click them because it'll take me to the page it says ap in red and what that means is there's a campaign going on where now you have a chance to get double pretty much it'll in well okay so the first thing for the second tab means that certain missions in the story are half off and same thing with the enhancement quest so it won't cost as much stamina to do that. So if you're jumping into the game now, it won't cost you as much stamina to get through missions because you won't start with as much. And then the fourth tab just means the equipment that you're leveling up will have an increased boost of how fast they go up and how much materials you have to use. So you won't have to spend as much. But let's go ahead and go over to the second tab and show you what each thing does. Okay, so... Up here where it says the one, that's how you switch from part one to part two. Um, obviously part one is all year one stuff, so you've got the first 14 chapters. Um, and then obviously part two is where we're at right now. And we've got roughly five chapters right now. So I'm not sure how, because I've always stayed caught up, so I'm not sure how it works. I don't, I'm not sure if you can start part two before you fully completed part one. But, um... If this is up here for you, obviously you can switch back and forth. Because part two does start at a lower rating. So, like, if you go to the first one right here. Like, the first mission is 1,800 power, which is nothing. So, if you are a new player, you could switch back and forth between the one and two stories. This second tab will be the event tab. It's not active right now because there are no current events going on. But uh, tonight we will have the Mogulu event, so that will pop up. And then this third tab is all your enhancement stuff. So the first enhancement, that's for your crystals to level up your equipment. Second and third ones are your anima orbs. You need different orbs to actually... Um, I, 
I say enhance, but it's basically a different... Basically, you'll get different skills with each of your arts the more, the more you upgrade them. Um, I'll show you what that is when we get to that tab. Uh, obviously, gold, you need a lot of it. Probably not as much as I have right now, because I have more than I know what to do with. And then the final one is for XP. So you'll do this mission if you just want to... If you don't need any of these other things, just go ahead and do the daily here. Um, to level up your characters. And also, these are daily, so you can see it shows the anima symbol on each one of these on the top left. Right now, it is, uh, I believe it's green. Yeah, yeah, that's green. So, you know, the Vesperia characters, um, all the characters that fall under that anima, uh, and Eternia as well, have that anima type. So, you'll be able to do this and then... Every Sunday is pretty much rainbow, so you can use any characters you want. And then this fourth tab is the tower. And what the tower is, is basically just you start on the first floor and you see how high you can go up. Every 10 floors, you get more rewards. Um, I believe they have up to floor 60 now, but we'll see when the next tower comes out. They usually have one once a month. Um, so we'll go on over to the third tab now. This is where you set up your teams. As you can see, you can have set you can have six teams set up. Usually, it's smart to have one of each type. That's what I have right now. Um, but depending on the event, so obviously, for example, tonight's event's going to be a rainbow event, the one that Magilu is coming on. So you will have to mix and match your team because events. Certain characters will give you more event currency per mission depending on who you're using. So obviously you want to use characters that are part of that event. So you'll look at the banner for the event and see who's on it. And then you'll just be like, okay, I'm going to make this team. But usually for events that are a singular type, you can just use one of your main teams and then just switch out characters of that anima. But we'll go ahead and click on the different stuff. So this button right here is what you do to favorite which team. So this will be the team that uh, appears on your main screen. Um, I never really mess with that. This button right here... Actually, which one is it? Okay, you don't really need to worry about this. This just kind of is a filter thing. But this one right here is an auto-equip. And if you're doing the beginner missions, you actually do need to press this because it's one of the beginner missions so it'll just equip the best gear for the characters that are on that specific team obviously when you get to the point where i'm at you already know what kind of weapons you want on your characters so you don't even want to touch that um so if you want to switch characters you just click on the character's picture then you've got your full roster of characters to switch out whoever you want very simple and then you click on this little tab down here to actually pull up their weapons window um, so I'll go over all these pages real quick. So top right here are your two mirror charts. Basically the character's ultimate attacks and what picture they'll have. Um, as you can see for Lloyd, I have both of his gotcha mirror charts that, uh, well, his best ones anyway. Um, then down here you've got your four weapons you can have equipped. Same thing, you just click on it if you want to switch out. Um, real quick. This is your filter thing. Make sure this bottom left one is checked off because that shows the weapons for that character first. I know whenever they do an actual like app update, sometimes it can turn off for people. But as you can see, I've got all different weapons for Lloyd. And once again, you know, consult the uh, wiki to know what each weapon does. Um, the second tab over here. So you can get different perks now for characters if you take them well you don't even have to take them when you go through the tower you can have awakened characters that can you know get different abilities like that and you just every time you complete 10 floors you can choose to give one character abilities and they're completely randomized so you may have to do it multiple times before you get the stuff that you want this right here is basically so you only control one character when you're playing at a time. So this determines what the AI will be doing with the character. So obviously for a character like Lloyd, you want to keep him on an attacking thing. Usually for your healer, you'll click this third option. 
So whoever you're using as your healer, they'll do that because they won't attack as much and they'll main they'll heal more. So the top one for a healing character will usually be like you know, whenever a character gets down to like 35% or less health. But if you want if you want the healing character to be doing more, so it'll say like when they get to 65% less, they'll heal then. And then the fourth tab is you won't really need this. It's just information about the character, and as they level up, you'll get more information. Uh, very basic stuff there. There is one more thing I want to show you guys on a character thing. So we'll go over to Rain over here, and I can show you. Um, nope. That is not what I meant to do. I meant to click this one. Oh, do I have her awakened? Since when? Okay. All right, well, that's not a good example. Forget that. I know for sure I don't have Estelle Awakened. And once again, I clicked the wrong one. All right, so we open up Estelle once it lets me. Why is it not? Oh, no, no, no. Okay, okay. So we're done here. That's that's pretty much all you need to know on this part. I forgot it's in the, in the next thing. So that's pretty much it for this. You know, you make your six teams once you have enough characters. And moving on to this, this is where, because I was going to show you the Awakening button, but I forgot it's in the Enhancement tab. Okay, so you click on that, it now shows all your characters. So there are different, you can look for a specific character. So let, like, for example, who do I not have Awakened? Obviously Estelle, like I said. This button right here, <clears throat> when you have enough of these teardrop crystals... You can basically awaken the character and they'll get better stats. They automatically get awakened if you pull a gotcha mirage art for them. But if you don't pull that, you can still forcibly awaken them if you want them to have the better stats. Um, so before we go on what's in there, that you can also just click all if you want to look at all the weapons at once in case you want to enhance. So we'll go over this real quick. So this first button, this is how you level up your equipment. So you'll just, I don't really have a lot that needs to be leveled up, so let's just find something real quick. Uh, right here, Emil. So, as you can see here, I can level this up, and it shows me all the different amounts of crystals that I have. What I usually do is I'll click the really, so this is just how you deselect right here. This button right here. So don't click that check mark because that will use the like super chiral crystals and stuff and you don't want to waste those on equipment. You want to save those for mirror jarts. So if you click this button right here will just use crystals that get an like basically uh, a boost for this type of weapon. But if you don't care about using a specific type you can click this one and you'll go ahead and do that. See it automatically selects 105. I click go. Real quick, done, see, maxed out, level 70, boom. So that's pretty much it for that thing. Now this one right here, this is how you enhance your equipment. So, for example, let's just go to one of Molina's. So, each time you enhance, it'll get a different stat boost, and you can do it up to five times. So you just click that right there, boom, enhanced. Very simple. Like I said, you can also select characters individually and do this. It'll work that way too. And then this one is for limit breaking. So if you get a dupe of a specific weapon, let's see if I have dupes of anything. Should have a dupe of something. Okay, here we go, Leon. So you take this dupe, you click that, boom. You can limit, so basically you need five of each weapon to have a fully limit broke weapon. And the same applies to Mirage Arts, but I'll show you that right now, actually. So you have the same stuff here. This is for leveling up Mirage Arts. I don't have any Mirage Arts to level up. But as you can see, you know, the regular Mirage Arts, the free ones you get for unlocking the character, stay at level 25. But then the ones you get from summons will default, they'll come out as level 1, you can level them up to 60. And if you get duplicates of them, you, they can get all the way to 100. As you can see, my highest one is actually my Cocos one, which I have at level 90. I need one more of those to be able to 100% it. Um, just increases the power of each thing and all that kind of stuff. 
Um, you can do the same thing here where you enhance uh, different mirror arts and they get different buffs. Same sort of thing. And of course, if you manage to get a duplicate of a mirror art. Now here's the thing with this. All mirror arts default to being locked. So what you would have to do is, let's say you had a duplicate. So let's click on this one, for example. Let's say this one was a duplicate for uh, Melina. You would have to click this button up here, unlock it, and then you could infuse it in. So you just want to unlock the one that you're going to be feeding in. So very simple stuff. So that's pretty much it for the, you know, enhancement part of this. Now this tab over here is the sale tab. So basically if you have already 100%ed a piece of gear, um, you can basically sell it and right up here you see these uh, these yellow prisms basically. You can use prisms to buy equipment from a shop in here. So for example, like let's go right here first. So for selling stuff, so for example, you wanna sell this one and two star equipment when you get further in the game. As you can see where it says 11 down there, well, first it shows how many I'm selling, then the second number is how much gold I'll be getting for selling them, and the third one is how many prisms you'll receive back from selling them. So you just go ahead and do that, numbers increase. Just like that. Then second tab is if you are going to, I don't know why you would ever need to, unless you're just like a super whale, uh, sell a mirror art. You could do that. Because I guess if you whale enough, you, you know, once you get... It's not like other games where it's like, oh, this might have a percentage for something else. Once you 100% a mirror art, a duplicate of that won't help ever. Like, you won't be able to use it for anything. You could give it to a separate... Because you can't... Because obviously, as I showed, an awakened character can have two mirror arts equipped. You can't put two of the same mirror art on one character to try and, like, double the stats. It doesn't work like that. Um, this third tab is your, this has all the story chapters, so if you wanted to use present, like, let's say you have a character, let's say, let's say, for example, you're starting out, you completed all your beginner missions, you got your free mirror art ticket. Let's say you got Velvet, for example, let's say you got her mirror art from your free ticket, but you don't have any weapons for her, and you have to wait till chapter 10 to even do that. You can go in here if you had Prisms, although if you're just starting out, you probably won't have too many Prisms anyway, but let's say for just the sake of this that you do you can go in here and you can buy her four stars you can buy her three stars so if you just wanted to deck her out with weapons you'd be able to do that so that is a very cool thing and then we have the same thing over here i won't be able to show something but you will have this when you start actually i don't know if it expired yet or not but you should see a picture of the you know that they're you know the two you won't know who they are, but they're two pixies. You'll see two pictures. Each one will give you, if they still give it, I'm not sure if they do, because it may have expired by now, but it it's basically a free ticket for a free character and for a free mirror chart. So it'll show all the, it'll show a list of year one characters that you can basically choose from to auto have now. So if you do have the two pixie pictures here, uh, you should be able to get it. But since it's not showing here, even for me, is probably gone by now. It's probably your one thing, but I'm sure they'll do something for beginner people later down the line. Um, so that's it for the sale tab. Now we will move over to the gotcha summon tab. All right. So as you can see, so this top one will be the current banners that are uh, basically important right now. So as you can see, you've got the the basically paid player. Uh, step up summon then you've got the regular summon um, Obviously, it, you know one single one's multi you can click this to Basically look up the rates of what's actually on the banner So you can see you know mirror art 5% chance 5 star 6% chance and so on and so forth So these are the three banners that are obviously uh, important right now then the second tab will have the story banner so these will be chapters one through, I believe one through three. Yeah, one through three. This is for chapters, I believe like three, four through seven. And then these are eight through 11. 
and then yeah 12 through the rest of them so basically whenever you get to a certain part of the story you know if you decide you want to summon a bit try and get something for these characters you can do that um it's really unfortunate if you're starting out the game now because if you had started out about a month and a half ago maybe two months ago when the mythos event came around that was the one year anniversary and they actually gave a free multi-summon for each one of these banners so that is unfortunate if that is the case um and down here is the friend point summon banner um what i like about the friend point summon stuff in this game as opposed to other games is you can get gotcha summon stuff from this so the there are three and four stars basically the three and four stars from all these story characters are possible to you can't get mirage arts from it but you can get three and four star weapons you do have a chance so that is also nice that you're able to do that so that's pretty much it for the gotcha tab it's pretty much everything and then this final area i'll just go over real quick what everything is um obviously first one is going to be how you get paid currency so if you spend real money and you want to get mirror gems that's how you do that Actually, that's not the only thing you can do there. So let's look at that real quick. So first one, obviously, is for your summon currency. Second one is to refill your stamina. Third one is to increase your weapon capacity. Fourth, mirage capacity. Fifth is you want to buy one of those passports. And sixth is a st to get extra storage. And I'll go into storage in a second. Um, second tab is your, like, friend card. So, you can see my friend ID. I, I guess anyone who's watching this and wants to add me, feel free. Um, and basically, what's important about this is when you go into a mission, obviously, you take a friend uh, unit with you, with you. Not exactly with you, but you take their mirror art with you. Um, so, you would basically... So, I, I have Milla right now because yesterday they had the Milla enhancement stuff going on. Obviously, tonight, if I pull one of the new mirror arts, I'll change it to that. So, basically, I'll just show you how you would do that. So, let's say, for example, I wanted to switch to Pascal. So, you would click on Pascal, click that, click the level 60, or whichever mirror chart you want to use. Then you click the sub mirror chart, and boom. Just like that. So, roughly, you want to, anytime something new is going on in the game. So, like I said, like tonight, you know, Mogilu's event is coming up. So, if you manage to pull Mogilu, Mint, Merity, or Estelle's new mirror chart... You obviously want to switch your friend thing to that because more people will use your character. Um, third thing is storage. I haven't really used this too much, but basically what you can do here is you can take a piece of equipment. Like, I don't use this, so we'll just use this for example. Click that. And basically you just put it in storage. But I don't need that right now, so I'm not going to put anything in storage. And then obviously this button, you take stuff out of storage. And the third one is to increase capacity. You know, simple. Um, fourth one just shows you all your items that you have obtained. This one right here. You can just look at all your characters. This one's really important. So basically what this one does, you'll want to click. So once every time you get a new character and you get their mirror chart, you'll want to click on this bottom left one. Because what this does, this is how you get your AP orbs. You increase your stamina. So you'll have all the characters here. So I'll click rain, for example. And then you'll have a little skit. And when you complete watching the skit, it'll give you an AP orb. And every eight, three AP orbs increases your stamina by one. So that is very, make sure you always do that whenever you get a new character and you get their base mirror chart. It will not apply if you, so um, Jade, for example, I didn't actually uh do his event on the japanese version when he was around so i don't have his base mirror chart i pulled him from a gotcha summon so i don't have his skit yet same thing with alicia uh colette i have i have two of her rainbow mirror charts and i still don't have her base one and obviously no one has zelos um so that's pretty much it and then the rest of these are just skits from the story um, if you only speak English, you won't really need these too much unless you just want to rewatch them for whatever reason. But that's pretty much it for that. Um, this is just volume. This is for help. This is like some kind of, I think that's like a, like a help code or something. The rest of these really don't matter. And then this one down here is how you set up your, basically you link your account to the Japanese Bandai account. So you will just Google Japanese Bando ID, Bando, 
Japanese Bandai Namco ID and you'll find a website that you have to make it on and then you can just have your you know your web browser do an auto translate while you make it um, but that's pretty much it guys those are pretty much all the buttons and what they do uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else but I think that's pretty much it if you have any more questions if there's something uh, maybe I didn't explain well enough or I didn't explain at all feel free to leave a comment down below but uh, other than that, I hope this video helped you guys out. Don't forget to subscribe for more if you're new to the channel. I will see you all in a few hours for the Mogilu event. We'll do a summon. As you can see, I've got some uh, currency to spend. Um, but we'll talk more about that on that video. So I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I will see you all next time.